talked to them and they decided to come back out on stage after all of this and have a bit of a discussion in front of everybody. John Lindell proceeded to say this. And for him to dare mock God and say that if you... Check out the links in the description for my favorite apparel, Bibles, books, commentaries, and more. Howdy y'all, I'm Brylan. So we're all aware of this happening by now. I'm sure you've heard of it. It has caused, caused, it has caused. It's caused quite a stir. This was at uh, the Stronger Men's Conference. Real quick, here's the conference. This is the Stronger Men's Conference for 2025. This is the type of conference you go to, to not be fed by the word, not be fed with truth, but, I don't know, to get your ears tickled a little bit. I mean, look at the speakers for next year that they have lined up already. Louis Giglio, Chad Veach, Earl McClellan. Earl McClellan. I mean, this should tell you everything, literally. I, well, Chad Veach alone is the dude that's like in his 40s and shows up to the high school parties thinking he's like still the hot shot. And then they have their special guests and they have their entertainment. Now, a lot of people rail against them having any type of entertainment whatsoever. Anyway, so yeah, they had this guy performing at the conference and this is exact, this is at the conference right here. And it's funny when you turn the sound on, well, I'm not gonna play it cause there's music and stuff, but you can hear people <laughs> screaming, OMG, like out loud, taking the Lord's name in vain. That, that, that's what that is. Now, most of the videos out there reacting to this have talked about how Mark Driscoll is a false teacher. That's the point that they've made out of all of this. Why isn't anybody pointing out the fact that this conference is essentially a wolf in sheep's clothing? Real quick, let's listen to what Mark Driscoll had to say in response to having that knife swallower person do the thingy on the pole. Hey, real quick, would you hit that thumbs up button? You know when you like this video to get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread the truth. But let me do this. Um, I've been up since one o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you and my heart is very burdened for you. And I wanna be very careful with this and it's not what I wanna say. But the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our head. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole, an ashram. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. In front of that was a man ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't ascend or God's humble. He descends. Well, I mean, it depends on how you want to see that Jesus ascended into heaven. I digress. And then he swallowed a sword and Jesus cried, okay, Pastor John, I'll receive yeah. that. Thank you. And then everybody cheers and boos and, you know, they, I don't know if they know what, whose side they're on really. But the, the pastor, John Lindell, the one who is over this conference, he was yelling from the crowd, you're done, and told Mark Driscoll to get off the stage. I will say, I thought it was funny. Someone over here said, you know your conference is whack when Mark Driscoll is the voice of reason. <laughs> Now, no, I don't believe that everything has a demon on it, and I don't believe that Christians can have demons. You know, that's one of the most dangerous things, I think, that's infiltrating the church today is this super charismatic, everything has a demon on it. And if you, if you, even, if you even open your eyes, at the, if you take a deep breath at the wrong time, you have just invited a demon into you, and that demon needs to be cast out. Even if you're a Christian, a Bible-believing Christian, you are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, then you can have a demon in you. That's what they teach. But that's what you get with these kind of conferences. It, it comes from this church, James River Church. Again, what you're going to see here is Pastor John and Debbie Lindell. Ooh, it's one of those churches. 
where the husband and the wife are co-pastors. Again, there's no biblical support for that at all, but they claim to have some moral authority. It's NAR stuff. They think that they're apostles, uh, carrying on apostleship, and they have some sort of authority, an anointing from God that cannot be refuted, and nothing they do is considered wrong or bad or evil or sinful. And if you speak against anything they're doing, then you are the one that is in the wrong. In fact, you can hear John Lindell here. John Lindell actually went and got Mark Driscoll, talked to him, and they decided to come back out on stage after all of this and have a bit of a discussion in front of everybody where Mark Driscoll apologized for calling out the buffoonery before the conference. John Lindell proceeded to say this. With me, you may not agree with either one of us. But here's the thing. You have to be careful that you do not criticize people who have the anointing of God on their life. Better, better to say nothing. Because what happens is, once you begin to criticize somebody who has the anointing on them, you're in the flesh. And once oh, you're in the flesh, then you're moving toward unbelief. And once wow. you move toward unbelief, Disgusting. then you live a barren life spiritually. And that's the danger. You see, you could go out of here not knowing Mark and I personally. You could go out of here chattering. And what happens is that it poisons your spirit and it leads you to a place of unbelief. Right here, what you're seeing is John Lindell using a fear tactic, trying to get you to feel fear in the fact that you saw what happened at this conference and thought, wow, that's not sitting right with me. I I'm feeling convicted about what's going on here. And then if you dare call out John Lindell for allowing that to take place at this conference, then you're at risk of, what, losing your faith? Look, he says it right here. Then you're moving toward unbelief. If you call out someone that has the Lord's anointing, who is that, by the way? Anybody that claims to be a Christian, anybody under the sun who claims to have the Lord's anointing, they're automatically off limits to correction or rebuke. No, that's not how this works at all, and that's not biblical whatsoever. This man is twisting Scripture to put you in a place of fear so that he can get away with whatever he wants and not have to worry about being called out. And he knows that those who are at this conference are going to fall for this hook, line, and sinker. And for him to dare mock God and say that if you criticize the Lord's anointed, meaning himself, if you criticize me, then, well, you're on the verge of unbelief and you will live a life that is barren. Those were his words. He just set himself up to be infallible. Nothing he does can ever be wrong. I'm going to see something in Galatians chapter 2 here. Check out what Paul says when he met Peter after Peter was living in hypocrisy. Check this out. But when Cephas, or Peter, came to Antioch, I, Paul, is talking here, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For before certain men came from James, he was eating with the Gentiles. But when they came, he drew back and separated himself, fearing the circumcision party. And the rest of the Jews acted hypocritically along with him, so that even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that their conduct was not in step with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas before them all, If you, though a Jew... Live like a Gentile and not like a Jew. How can you force the Gentiles to live like Jews? I would say if someone had the Lord's anointing, it would be Peter. And for Paul to call out Peter here for being a hypocrite, for doing something he should not have done. And Paul says that he called Peter out in front of everybody for what he did. Because it was a public sin and it was a public sin rebuke. So no, don't fall for this. If you call out the Lord's anointed, you're on the verge of unbelief and you could lose your salvation. So just sit quietly and don't ever call. That is, it, it is so antithetical to biblical truth that it is absolutely insane that people are falling for this. And it truly is sad. 
but this is the type of Christianity infiltrating the church. The type of Christianity where we just sit quietly and watch our leaders destroy the church, run the church into the ground, go along to get along with the world, turn the church upside down in order to appease the world. Don't ever speak out against the cultural insanity going on because, well, we're not allowed to be a part of that. We're not allowed to talk about politics. We're not allowed to be a part of shaping society when that's exactly where we should be. And being unashamed of the truth of God's word. Do not fall for conferences like this Stronger Men's Conference. It, it is everything wrong with the church today. It is watered down, and it's all about the entertainment aspect. Not that having fun is bad, but when we clearly see something that's out of line, and you're not allowed to say anything about it because you don't want to go against the Lord's anointed, otherwise you're not really a Christian, then all that is is fear being put into you, trying to get you to weaken yourself. But hey, let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, join this community, I would love to hear from you regularly. And please hit that thumbs up button as well. You know when you like this video, it, it'll get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread the truth. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.